I think there are two things that is really important for patients. One is the fact that uh, these uh, new modalities that we have really opens up uh, new opportunities for helping patients in cancers that we previously couldn't really reach um, with chemotherapies or even targeted therapies. So that's basically the hopeful part of it and that's something that is really extending uh, beyond the many of the cancers that we previously been able to really treat effectively. But at the same time, you're now dealing with new uh, side effects. Side effects that we previously didn't really see with chemotherapies or targeted therapies for that matter. And these type of side effects can really have you know, major impacts on the life of the patient after uh, and during their receiving the therapy. So both of these have to be put into context that we have better opportunities, there are better, perhaps better or more extensive treatment modalities are available, but be cognizant of the fact that they can come in with you know, new set of side effects, some of them even more serious than you saw, we have seen with chemotherapy or, or targeted therapy. So, so it's a, it provides a great hope for patients in, 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 in especially in space of metastatic cancers across the board, but also it's something that you don't want to just jump into it. You have to know benefits and risk of it before you really want to go and pursue that type of treatment. The key, I think, especially coming out of the talk that I gave, looking at the what we call innate immune cell activation in cancer immunotherapy, is the, is the point that the conventional immunotherapeutics are really just uh, targeting and helping, let's say, 20% at best across the board cancers in patients. But we still see a lot of opportunity in the other 80% of cancers that we can bring them to this responsive group of patients if we can really uh, broaden our scope of therapeutics that we are using in patients. So just giving folks and clinicians a, a sort of an insight into the fact that, you know, current immunotherapy, although effective, there's a lot more that we are discovering in laboratories or in preclinical settings or even in trials now that could be quickly, hopefully, translated into clinical practice and expand this efficacy of immunotherapies across many of the cancers. For example, the ones that we, um, I personally work on, like skin cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, those are the ones that are less sort of if, uh, benefited from this wave of immunotherapeutics. Uh, and we believe that some of these uh, new, if you will, distinct modalities of immunotherapy that are coming up could help those patients. In my specific case, so I study uh, how can we use the immune system to prevent cancer. So I'm mostly in the context of what I call a cancer immunoprevention paradigm. And in that space, you, Mass General Hospital is very, very uniquely positioned to address that question. In other words, it is a hospital that we see early cancers, the cancers that are not necessarily going to oncologists, but they're coming to dermatologists, to GI doctors, to you know, gynecologists for their treatment, which is mostly right now our surgical treatment but they end up having relapses and metastatic disease down the road. And we can really see those patients and bring them into this space of immunotherapy or what I call immunoprevention. And this is at least as relates to what we do in the lab and what we do in the research. It's been very, very helpful being at MGH and being at a general hospital with extensive and massive number of patients coming through even pre-metastatic stage and in, in early cancer phase that we can then hopefully help them to prevent them from getting into metastatic phase of the disease.